Yo, what is going on, Vulcan Turtle family? I hope you're all having a fantastic day. Back when I first started playing in the TCG and I really wanted to like learn about the competitive world and things like that, I took a very specific deck to a league challenge and it was Trevenant in Dusknor GX. It was such a fun deck because you were able to kind of just dismantle your opponent's hand and that is what today's video is all about. Can we dismantle our opponent's hand with just a few cards we have in standard that can do it? And by that, I mean one. So sit back and relax while we play Fortress EX with Trevenant V. When Fortress EX was first shown to us from Paldea Evolved, we thought that this card was bad. And don't get me wrong, it's still not good to give your opponent prize cards, especially with the type of thing that we're going to be doing. But I feel like this type of ability really does thrive in this deck. Now, what are we exactly doing? What's the game plan here? Well, Fortress EX allows us to use Exploding Energy, and then we can search our deck for five basic Grass Energy cards and attach them to our Pokemon in any way we like, which is pretty gnarly, right? But the cost there is that Fortress gets knocked out, so they get two prize cards. If we do that twice, our opponent goes down to two prize cards. We're playing Trevenant. With Trevenant, we have Shadow Claw, which says that we do 120 damage and then we get to remove a random card from our opponent's hand. It goes straight to the discard pile, so they're not really going to be able to use it again. It doesn't go like on top of the deck or at the bottom. It's discarded, meaning that going into our opponent's turn, they only have the top deck and the one card they got to keep. How are we going to be consistently doing this? Well, we do have a bunch of search options like Level Ball to get our Fortress. We do have four Nest Ball. We do have four Ultra Ball. We are definitely doing everything in our power to make sure that we get these Pinecos down and to find our fortress we also have a squawk ability a squawk ability in this deck yeah squawk ability i'm not even going to censor myself on that anymore squawk ability days are over it's squawk ability we're playing that we're also playing bidoof so that way we can refresh our hand if we do go down in low hand size now the way that we're actually making sure that our opponent is keeping a very small hand is after we fortress twice they're gonna have two prize cards that gives us the ability to use iono so we get six and they get two and then we attack and now they only have one card we do have judge in here judge probably isn't better than iono in this list honestly and you know what while we're discussing it i don't like judge now that i'm thinking about it because it gives them an extra card so we're actually going to remove judge and add two more inos into the list because it just feels better so let me go ahead and find those judge cards where'd they go where did they go i just saw them there they are and we're gonna add two more ino to the list there we go so four ino are in this no judge basically after fortressing twice it gives us access to ino which we always have access to but the bright side to ino here is that with the only two prize cards our opponent has, they're only getting two, and we're getting six, so long as we take no knockout, but if we keep taking knockouts, I know it does get a little worse, and that's where Roxanne does come in. Roxanne does the exact same thing as I know in this situation, except we are always going to draw six and not based on our prize cards. So both of these cards are designed to, in this deck, get our opponent to two cards in hand, so that way we can strip one with Trevenant, and they no longer have any cards. Like, they just don't have anything they have the one card they kept and the draw for the turn now for the rest of the cards in this deck we are playing penny so that way we can pick up a trevenant and thanks to bravery charm it's a little bit more bulkier we do have a little bit more mill in here with misfortune sisters we also have a silene so we can recycle a lot of these cards along with pow pad and you know it's your basic loop here we have the team yell silene plus pow pad now the only way that this deck actually fumbles is if our opponent does play a stadium card like path to the peak we unfortunately cannot out path to the peak because we're not playing any stadium cards but but hopefully we don't run into that because <laughs> if we do, that's going to be a little bit of an issue. So that is basically the entire list. I will always have these lists in the description for you guys so you can try them out. So with that said, let's jump into a game. All right, guys, here we go into our game with Fortress Trevenant Hand Control, and hopefully it works. This is very much a going first type of deck, so ooh, ooh, I don't like that. We're going to be going second doesn't feel very good if i'm being honest it doesn't feel very good i guess the only time it feels good is if they get a knockout on a one prizer and then we double explode that sets them to uh one prize card and then we can completely rip their hand apart uh okay so we're gonna get a mulligan here which sucks but hey you know it is what it is you got it sometimes you just get the mulligans you don't get the starts you want which we want to start like a bunch of Pinecos. We want to make sure that we're getting all set up. We get our draw support. There's a couple. Oh, oh, hold up. Hold up. This might actually be okay. This might actually be okay. Got a couple of Nest Balls. We got an Ultra Ball here. So we know that we can get at least a barrel down. Feels good. Yo, I just noticed that like they have the Wu Chen thing in the background. Ooh, we're against Chen Pao. Chen Pao. 
Okay. So long as they don't like, so long as this isn't like the Babarel version, we should be fine. If it's not the Babarel version, we should be fine. And so long as they also like don't put down Arceus too. We'll see though. We will see. So there's the Spirit Tomb. Okay, well, interesting grab here. Not sure why we're not playing. I mean, I guess I see what, like, if you think I'm playing, like, basic V Pokemon with abilities, the Spear Tomb makes sense. But as of right now, we are not playing that. So, Ripperoni. So there's an Ultra Ball. They are playing an Arctabax in here, which is kind of interesting. Maybe, like, slow roll, because you don't, like, always want to rely on, like, getting Irida if just in case something gets, like, you just, like, slow roll one up. I guess it, like, makes sense in certain scenarios, like, a 3-1-3 three, three line of Frigibax, 1 Arctabax, 3 back Scalibur. I can see that. Like, it, it makes a little sense. And we're probably going to be seeing a lot of that coming up in Obsidian Flames as well, because people are going to want to play Charizard, and they're probably going to play, like, a 4-1-4 four, four, or a 3-1-3 three, three line. Okay, so no attach for the turn. Nothing really crazy happened. So let's go ahead and just set up. Um, okay, so we do have a Bidoof, which feels really good here. And we do have another Pinaco in deck, which I think I want to grab. But I also really want to grab this Squawkabilly. Which I'm going to do. So I'm going to dump this Bravery Charm in this Penny. And we're going to grab another Pinaco just in case they do get a knockout on our active Pinaco. we kind of need them to because we don't really we don't run any switch cards so we did get a fortress here and a nest ball so that feels pretty good too so we're gonna pass here we're gonna pass we also got the barrel which is nice we have a nest ball we have a lot of burnable cards in our hand which is great okay so here's irida so i'm assuming they're gonna get the knockout on the Pinaco, which is something we really want Oh, dang, bro, I'm dumb. We should have put the Trevenant down so we could have promoted it. Oh, no. Well, you know what? It's actually fine, though. It's fine because if we explode, we can attach one to Bidoof and retreat. So, honestly, no, this makes sense. This is fine. We're cool. We are chilling. Now, they if they have two energy in hand, they can retreat this Frigibax. Or if they just like have the switch because they did ear it up for the rare candy. So, they're... Oh, they're going with Greninja here. Okay, you know what? I don't hate that, but also that's scary because if they knock out two Pinecos before we explode, uh, I'm not going to like that too much. <laughs> not going to like that too much at all. Actually, you know what we could do? We could evolve the active explode. Okay, okay, hold up. We might be onto something. So what we'll do is we'll evolve the active, nest ball for a Trevenant, and just start burning these cards away. If we can get a second Fortress, we're going to be feeling really good. Nice. We got the discard, which feels good. See you later, Water Energy. Okay, we'll attack. We'll go here. We will Poke Gear for nothing because we already have an Iono in hand. So we need to draw into another Fortress for us to start popping. No, we don't get there. It's fine. We'll, we'll reset them to four again. Uh, don't want to do all five. We could just do three, which is the needed amount for the Trevenant. And then we're going to do 120 to this back, so it feels pretty good. So Fortress goes down here. They're going to go to six. We're going to Iono them to four, which essentially becomes three because of Shadow Claw. Okay, so we'll do this. We will do this. We'll attach here. We will Iono them down to four. And hopefully we get drawn to a fortress in like another I know. Okay, cool. Yeah, we got the Ultra Ball. We're chilling. We're chilling. All right. So that goes there. We will Shadow Claw for 120. Strip a card from their hand. Hopefully it's a good one. VIP Pass sucks in this scenario because it's already a dead card. Not what we wanted to see, if I'm being honest. So next turn, we can explode again. Put them to two I know. And then at that point, we're stripping a card every turn. Which feels great. Okay, so they did draw into an energy which they can discard with concealed cards. I was thinking path would be nice in this list, but then like if, you know, it comes down, we can't play our fortress. But we already don't play any stadium bumps to begin with, so if our opponent plays path, I don't know. We'd have to like revise the list a little bit more. That's what your guys' job is. So let me know in the comments what you guys would change about this deck. 
I really want to know. I think it's a really funny, interesting deck. Something to play against your friends to like peeve them a little bit. I think our opponent's like bricked right now. Nest ball. Okay, well, let's see what they get. Hopefully not a Bidoof. Another Frigibax. Okay, so I like that. No, no draw support here. No draw Pokemons. Love to see it. Love to see it. So next turn we can Ultra Ball a Grass and an Ino. Oh, they're gonna boss us. Chill. I'm fine with it because we're gonna explode. <laughs> <laughs> we're just gonna explode anyway it's it's cool we're fine we are chilling on that front okay yeah there's the turn pass so we are gonna take full oh we top decked it bro chill okay so yeah we're gonna explode for sure now for sure so exploding energy big boom on the fortress we'll grab the rest of our energies here we'll put one on the trevenant and two on the b barrel for retreat later. Feels fine. I think we prize energy too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We play 10. There's eight in my hand there. Yeah, we prized a couple. So we will be able to like attach to Pinaco if we want to retreat the Pinaco. And we'll bring up the Trevenant. And now we will Iono. So Iono will get us a bunch of new cards. Got a forest seal stone. Not that it matters too, too much. Oh, actually, I probably should have put the other Trevenant up, huh? Because it has the big charm. I don't think it's going to matter at this point. Let's just see if our opponent's actually able to do anything. We ripped away a Palkia. So this is a Palkia version. And we will take a prize card here. Got ourselves a Team Yells Cheer. Honestly, the forest seal stone doesn't feel bad now. Because if they do get damage down on this Trevenant, we could just forest seal stone for a penny. Because now we're just looping. We don't need to keep Ionoing them unless they draw a bunch of cards. So yeah, we probably would want to Iono this next turn. Unless they like play more cards from their hand. I'm not sure. Boss's orders also probably feels pretty good in this situation. Because then you can like boss out the Frigid Backs or the Spirit Tomb. All that good stuff. Like you really go heavy on it. There's an Irida. Dang, they, they pretty much like drew what they needed, huh? Because now they can get rare candy backs again. Shivery chill for two energy. Accelerate and then attack. Which doesn't feel good for us, right? It doesn't feel good for us. Hmm. Oh, they get a heavy ball. They must have a rare candy in hand. Okay, yeah, they had a rare candy. I was like, there's no way they threw away all the rare candies. But the cool thing here... The cool thing here... Is that... This is pretty much their whole turn. So once they accelerate these two energies, they're going to have two cards in hand. We could just attack again. Oh, they have the heavy ball too. So they're going to have no cards. Yeah, I think we definitely forest seal stone for a penny here. 100% we forest seal stone for a penny. No doubt about it. Oh, they got the pokey stuff though. We can't really do much about that. Got an ultra ball. And they're throwing away those two. Okay. Honestly, I think I'm feeling a lot better now. Because now we know the one card in their hand is an Ultra Ball. Which they may not be able to use for anything too decent right away. Yeah, I think we definitely go for the Penny. Do we toss Penny? Oh, we tossed Penny. Ooh. Ooh, that's not good. We toss the Penny. We could just manually retreat. And then we could like Silene it back in the deck. I think that's what we'll do. We'll go ahead and just manually retreat the Trevenant. And then we can... I think we just attack, right? At this point, like... We'll Team Yelchir just to refill our deck up. Put Penny back in and a couple of Iono. And we'll Shadow Claw. So the Ultra Ball that's in their hand is going away. That's gone. No longer useful. And they're just top decking now. I mean, granted, they could always shivery chill and then throw one away with the... Uh... Oh my god, they hit the nuts off this, this pokey stuff. They got everything. Although they didn't... Uh, they did not get an energy... Uh, superior energy retrieval. That is something they did not get here. Which they would probably want to grab if they want to knock out our Trevenant. They're going to super rod. So they could shivery chill here for two, swing 120. That is something they could do. Mm-hmm. 
selecting cards from their deck. Concealed cards, discard. So they are reset up. So this is where we like hit them with a Roxanne again. Oh no, they got the superior energy retrieval and we don't have any way to build it up again. Oh, that's a rip. That is a rip. No, we wanted to win that one. All right, guys, here we go into our next matchup here. We have an opponent that looks like they have a fortress coin, which is absolutely hilarious uh, because we're playing fortress. <laughs> <laughs> and we have a Blastoise coin, so I think they uh, foreshadowed their 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 doom here soon. Let's go ahead and see if we can pull off any shenanigans, get rid of their hand, and hopefully squeeze out a dub. Now, I'm not saying this deck is, like, so nuts crazy, right? But I like the idea that you are able to actually pull off extreme hand disruption in this format, which is something we don't see quite often. Uh, I think, like, the most recent or prior one I, I, I ever played with was uh, Trevenant and Dust Noir GX. So, seeing it in this format is pretty cool. I, I like it a lot. But we'll see if we're able to, you know, get that rolling for us. We do start Pinaco here. Uh, not looking good in the hand department. We do have a Nest Ball and an Ultra Ball. But we kind of want to make sure that we're setting up pinecos so we might have to go get ourselves a squawkabilly and lose out on the ino which does stink but we'll see what we can do artisan artisan helps us out big time actually because then we can go get pineco and not worry about the nest ball getting a pineco or getting a squawkabilly so we're kind of in the clear here they do have a bit doof which does stink a little bit but we'll see if we're able to pull off the win okay so team yell cheer doesn't do anything for us let's go ahead and use this artisan Artisan can get our Pinaco down. Make sure that we get all these Pinacos. Actually, we could just Ultra Ball for the Squawk ability and make sure that we're just getting set up at this point. So we'll go ahead and grab a Bidoof. We will toss an Energy and the Team Yelchir to get ourselves the Squawk ability. And then we will Crushing Hammer. Hopefully get rid of that Fighting Energy. We do. Nice. Okay. Does stink to lose an Iono, but I don't want to give my opponent a whole bunch of resources. So Squawk and Seize it is from Squawk Ability. Okay, so now we have a Barrel, a uh, Bravery Charm, and an Iono. I think... Let's say they get the Knockout next turn. I think we need to attach this here so we have a Pivot Point. I'm going to put the Bravery Charm on the Pinaco, and then I'm going to pass. Because I know at least next turn I could probably Crushing Hammer. I can play Barrel, And then maybe I can find myself the Trevenant and the Fortresses. So hopefully that is the situation that we put ourselves in. Okay, they're going to use their Artisan to find themselves. What's being found here? Probably another Glimmit. A Squavit. Okay. Squavit is a good way to uh, refresh your hand. They had the Ultra Ball. No! They are always going to be able to refresh their hand no matter what now. Oh, that stinks. Oh, they're going for the Glamora, actually. Okay, you know what? Take that back. Unless they have the Bidu or the Barrel in hand. So what does this homie do? When this Pokemon's knocked out, flip a coin of heads, they can't take any prize cards. If your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned, during it takes six damage counters in between turns. Understood. So they're going to Nest Dash for one here. Interesting. Okay, so there's the Poison Petals. 60 damage to our Pinaco. We need to really draw a fortress here let's go and then we also need to get the trevenant because trevenant is pretty important okay so let's go ahead and put this here we're gonna crushing hammer crushing hammer to get rid of this glamora's energy hopefully nope nothing there oh man i really don't want to iono let's go ahead and artisan we'll get another bidoof on the bench we can draw a couple cards off the barrel and we got a Trevenant. Okay, cool. And we got... Oh, and we got the other Fortress. Oh, this is a big rip. Okay, so... Honestly, we don't even need to explode the other Fortress yet, though. We really don't. Because they only have one card in hand that we're going to be ripping away. Which I don't think they expected to see a Trevenant V rip the one card in hand away. So, Fortress is knocked out. Uh, but they are going to get two cards off the prizes. That is the other thing. They are going to get two cards off prizes here. But we are going to rip one away. I wonder if I just go for it. But then it feels bad because then like... 
well, we don't have any other energy in deck, so we can't even build up another Trevenant if we wanted to. Okay, yeah, that's what we're going to do. We're going to explode the other Fortress, give them two more prize cards, I know them, swing with Shadow Claw, and put them to one card in hand, relying on top deck and whatever card is in the hand at that point. Or we can Roxanne. Yeah, let's Roxanne. Why not? We'll get six cards, they will get two. Okie dokie. Uh, let's go ahead and put Trevenant down. We'll go ahead and give him an energy. And then we will Shadow Claw for 240 damage. Getting the knockout and ripping an Artisan from their hand. So, do we get a prize card actually? Oh, wait a minute. I don't think we do. We don't get a prize card. Oh, no. Okay, Glamora. Making things a little bit more difficult for us here, I see. So up comes the, glim the Glimit, and now they literally just have to figure out if they're going to be able to top deck the out, or- No way did they just top deck a research. Did we give them that research, or did they top deck it? That's insane. That is just pure luck right there. That is lucky. Uh, the unfortunate situation here is if we get poisoned, we don't have a lot of switch around cards, so we would have to find ourselves the penny. And even then, this Trevenant is not built up. So, yikes. Not looking good. Not looking good. So, there's level ball. And they only need two prize cards to actually take the W here. Artisan. Probably getting another Glimit if they have the fourth one in deck. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so Glimit. Glimit's galore. And they do... Yeah, they do still have, like, the Nestash and the Industrious Incisor. So... They can probably find everything they need. We'll find out. We'll find out. If they can find the Glamora and the energy. Because they already researched for the turn. There's a level ball. Getting another Bidoof down. I will say this deck is extraordinarily difficult to play when your opponent is always probably going to have a Bibarel. So that makes things a little bit more difficult for us, I will admit. Uh, let's go ahead and Ultra Ball away the Pokey Gear and we can grab the Pinaco. I don't think it matters too, too much. And, uh, let's Iono them. Well, Iono them to two. Okay, so we did find a Crushing Hammer, which is fine, but honestly, it doesn't matter too, too much. We'll go ahead and just swing. We should, oh, we got rid of their INO. Huge. Okay, so now we get a prize card for sure, which is an energy good. So we can start building up this other Trevenant. But they still have access to Nestash plus Industrious Incisors. So they do still have a ton of draw. I do think that this deck needs a boss's orders or cross switchers or something. The problem is like you want to like disrupt every turn. And we're not able to disrupt plus gust out something like the barrel unless we're playing an item gust card like Pokemon Catcher, which could actually be pretty good in a deck like this. Okay, we got judged and we got ourselves a Roxanne and Misfortune Sisters. So let's go ahead and Roxanne. <laughs> and a switch probably giving us something that doesn't have an energy on it. Yep. Okay, so the other Glimit's coming up. We know that we have an energy in the deck at the very least. And nest stash to one. Okay, now that they've nest stash to one, we can use something like Misfortune Sisters. Which gets nothing. Oh, rip. But we know that they have two bosses orders in the deck now. That information is pretty nice. Uh, I want to see if I can at least draw that other energy from the deck. So let's go ahead. Industries Incisors for three. No, but we do find Crushing Hammer, which could be huge. Come on, baby. Let's go. Okay, so we got rid of that fighting energy on that Glimit in the back. That feels pretty nice. Uh, let's go ahead and Incisors for one. Ah, no energy. That is fine. We'll just go ahead and Shadow Claw, and we'll get rid of the one card that's in their hand, which was a Manaphy. So, yeah, I mean, useless card in this scenario. Go ahead and get our prize card. And it is another energy, so that's good. So long as we don't get, like, judged again. <laughs> so here's Glimit coming into the active. Man, you know, this would actually be, like, a really bad lock for my opponent if they didn't have the Bivaral. 
If they didn't have the Babero, it would be a huge lock. Oh, they got the Clara, though. They did get the Clara. So they do now have the Glamora, the Energy, and the other Glimit to put on bench. That was a huge top deck for them. So we are going to get poisoned for sure. Let's see if we can find that penny. We can survive a few turns. Oh, actually, no. We don't want to attack with this Trevenant anymore. Because then it will go into their turn, then back to us, and we'll be knocked out. Yikes. Okay, we need to find that penny. Uh, we can grab this. Is it even in the deck? Is Penny even in the deck? I have no clue. Okay, Penny is in the deck. Let's go ahead and pal pad. Put a Roxanne and an Iono back into the list. We can draw a couple cards with the barrel. Oh no, it's not looking good. Draw one card with this barrel. Oh, I thought that was the penny. Okay. So we can heal 30. We can go ahead and Roxanne. And we got the penny for next turn. Okay. Um, We could attack heal 30, but that won't be enough to survive two turns. We're going to have to hard retreat here, which feels bad, but we'll give them the squawk ability and pass. We're pretty much reliant on trying to keep ourselves alive at this point. Boss's orders. No. Well, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up. This actually could be fine. This could be fine because then we could just penny it out of the active and attach the energy to the one on the bench. Ultra Ball, okay. Getting rid of a Nest and an Iono. To get another Glamora. So now we can't disrupt them. And, and like, do okay. Oh, man, this actually is, like, bad for us. So there's the 160. Yeah, we're gonna have to penny up the Trevenant. And we're gonna have to bring this one up. Oh, man. Yeah, we're just going to lose this for sure. 210 damage to Glamora. Getting rid of their boss's orders. Do we take a prize card? We don't even take a prize card. The gimmick is being out gimmicked by a better gimmick. So there's the other Glamora. So at this point, we just lose. We literally just lose because we cannot survive that much damage from poison. It's just not happening. Glimmit coming down. Yeah, we are we are pretty much done. There is a no way for us to win this game. Poison petals, 80 damage. Ouch. Got another grass energy here. Not that it matters too too much. And go ahead and Roxanne just for the fun of it. But we are definitely going to be knocked out here soon. Crushing Hammer. We can get rid of the energy on the Glimmit in the back. We can only swing 60 with Absorb Life too. Yep, we're just going to have to Shadow Claw. So we're going to take 80. It's going to come back to us, and then we're just going to lose. But honestly, if they didn't have the barrel, I feel like you guys can really see the potential of strong hand disruption, right? Having this much hand disruption and being able to crush your opponent in this aspect can really make a lot of other decks just not good. Um, dang, dude, if we actually found like the Bravery Charm, we would have survived. If we found the Bravery Charm, we would have survived. Dang, dude. Feels bad. And they got the double bib down, just like us. But you can see, like, how hand disruption can be used powerfully. And if your opponent doesn't have things like Barrel, 
uh, or any other draw supporter like Pokemon on the bench, then you're honestly probably going to be okay because if they're not top decking out, then you're just going to keep swinging 120, 120, 120. But yeah, we just lost here. So, but that is the premise of the deck. And honestly, if we had bosses orders and stuff and get rid of like these draw supporters a little early, it'd be pretty good. But thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate it. We lost two times today, but you know what? It's fine because I just wanted to show you the fun gimmick of this deck. Thank you so much for watching and look forward to Obsidian Flames deck list here soon. They come out on Thursday or the, uh, yeah, Thursday is when Obsidian Flames will be on PTCGL. So we will start with a Charizard video, but thank you guys for watching. I truly appreciate it. Until next time, stay safe and be kind.